Hello again, welcome back. Thank you so much for still tuning in with us. We are still chatting to our beautiful couple and now I want to find out a little bit more about couples help. Um, I also did some research and I've heard about you guys from a couple of people. So take me through what inspired you to start um, Couples Help. So from my counseling background, I just realized that there's not a lot of a specialized help for couples going through issues and, and I wanted to give my life to helping couples to step into conscious and connected marriages. And it was a field that wasn't really um, explored yet. We have a lot of um, individual kind of paradigm in universities, but we're only waking up to the relational paradigm of what happens with the individual in the relationship. And that fascinated me and I just loved seeing couples getting it right. I like that. What are the most common um, issues that couples face? especially in this day and age? So I would like to say there's not common issues. Okay. So each couple showing up is very unique. And I, I, will, I would like couples to know that. Mm. That there's not a one shoe fits all. Um, they are so unique. Mm. So it, it, it's really... So to come to a few of the issues, I think one of the biggest things for couples in South Africa mm. is, um, the, first of all, the connection patterns that most couples spend about six minutes a week in intimate connection, like looking, touching, speaking, um, really connection. Our deepest need is to be touched and to be seen. Mm. Not watching Netflix or intimate connection. People don't do that. Mm. And our deepest need is to feel connected. And we can only feel connected when we practically do it. Mm. And for some reason, couples don't do that. So that's one thing. I think that's a big challenge for couples to create a world and a life and a rhythm to live connected lives. To stop and just to check in and to, to feel connected. Yeah, that's interesting. What are the others? The one is what we do in the pain cycle um, when it hurts. So each couple is very unique, each person is very unique. From a very young age, the first thing we do when it hurts is we step away from vulnerability. And all of us do it in different ways. And when these two people come together and they go into that committed stage I, I told you about is how they step away from vulnerability creates a pain cycle and abandonment and rejection. And to help couples to understand that, the one that screams, the one that becomes quiet, the one that gets into the car and wants to end it. Um, all, the two, all the two silent people, that's the one. Striking the balance. Striking the, yeah, and, and, and to learn to stay connected in pain. That's an that's a art yeah. that you need to learn. Sure. Not to shut down, not to go to unconscious beliefs, not to leave vulnerability behind, mm -hmm. but to really engage in pain in a way that brings connection and not disconnection. Wow. That's an art that couples need to learn. Yeah. It took us a good four and a half or five years to, to start getting it right. To get to that, what, what, um, how did you get to that point? Was it a lot of counseling? It was that. Conscious living, conscious about yourself. Um, Self-awareness, accountability. Yeah, getting it wrong, getting it wrong, getting it right, getting it wrong, getting it right, right. Yes. So yeah, it's a bit like... Um, and, and celebrating each time we did yeah. it, we're like, yes, yeah. this time we made it. Yeah. You know, I did not run away, you didn't become quiet. We got this right. It was easy to celebrate because you were conscious yes. about it, which is important. Yes. Take me through the importance of premarital counselling. Yeah, I think it's very important. I, luckily, it's growing in South Africa. A lot of couples are considering that. Um, premarital counselling just helps couples to wake up to the mystery of who they are. So usually premarital counselling was about how to communicate, um, how to do love. But these days we teach couples that deep unconscious psychotherapy of the two people together. Mm. And that helps a lot wow. for couples if they don't need to go through a pain cycle that ends up in exit or a fair, but they had the skills to understand yes. this deep nuances mm. that is happening between them. Mm. That helps a lot. Mm. Um, the less the pain and the trauma, the better the recovery. So yeah. if couples don't need to go through that, mm. it helps a lot. Yeah, sure. 
Take me through the, the trend of, um, I think, people in the Christian community now finding counselling because that's one of the conversations we would like to open up as far as sometimes realising that the pastor might not be the counsellor for the marriage, but you can get professional help to either for premarital counselling or maybe when things go wrong. So the interesting thing is I get a lot of calls of people asking me if I'm a Christian. So there are a lot of Christians that are looking for Christian help, or people that operate from a, from a Christian background. So there are a lot of Christians um, looking out for help. I think it's really important for couples to understand this, that prayer's got a place, Bible reading's got a place, belief has got a place, but somewhere along the line you need someone that takes you into psychotherapy and psychology of who you are and what's busy happening with you. This is two very different ecosystems coming together and the dynamics that is unfolding mm. needs a translator. Mm. And having someone on the outside to translate this in intriguing dance yes. helps you. Yes. And sometimes prayer is not enough. Mm. And belief is not enough. Mm. No, I, think, I think we are called to um, take responsibility of what was handed to you um, and, um, and own up to that and make sure that you do your best to this wonderful gift that was, was provided to you. Um, you cannot just go like this and say, okay, let's just um, do a prayer and then I'm sure things will go right. I, I think that is um, very arrogant to just um, step away and say, um, I don't recognize my part in this um, and um, I don't have to, to give more, I don't have to work more. I think it's something that can only be, be resolved through um, yeah, putting my, my thoughts into prayers and all my energy into that. Mm. I really think you have to also give a little bit of yourself and um, mm. own up to that. Michelle, I see a lot of times how Christian spirituality hurts relationships. So, the one story of, of, of a husband that's abusive, alcoholic, goes to a men's conference, you get this revelation and this turnaround story, he comes back home and he declares it to the family, he says, I'm a reborn Christian, and now the family just needs to step into that the next day, while they are sitting with years and years of abuse and the expectation from the one that had that conversion to say, well, God forgave me, now you need to forgive me. And not, so for me, true conversion is walking the path, the path of restoration. Mm. Taking accountability, face the pain I caused. Mm. Um, and, and I think that's where counseling also comes in for yes. Christians. Yeah. To take it to forgiveness and all of that, but through the process of true restoration. Or having an affair, a wife had an affair, um, now she wants her husband back, she goes to the pastor, she has got, she's got this deep turnaround mm -hmm. and now the family just needs to move on. Yes, it's a hurtful place. Mm -hmm. And then they, they play on it to say, well, if you can't forgive me, mm -hmm. then um, you need to talk to God because forgiveness is something that you need to give. Yes. If I ask for it, now if I repent. Yeah. But, sure. but there's a deep process in that trauma that needs to happen. Mm. But I also think that the Word of God does talk about these things. I mean, like when you said that um, sometimes prayer is not enough, even the Word of God talks about um, sowing and, and reaping whatever you've sowed. You know, those are the consequences of the things that you've done. And you need to be able to walk through that process with anyone. And I think also like when you are getting into a marriage or you want to fix something or you just want to develop yourself, the Bible talks about when you get seeds and and you can't just hold seeds in your hands and pray that they grow in your hand. You, know, you need to find good soil. You need to take care of the seed. And that's the process of nurturing the relationship and going through that phase of getting the counseling because then you will reap a great harvest because you've really put in the work and you've worked in it. Uh, one of the most beautiful stories to me that comes up is the one about um, David, eh? Yes. When Nathan comes to him, mm. the deep repentance, but he needs to own up to, yes. to the whole story. Wow. You can't just walk away from it. Yes, we can't just hide, yes. you know, hide under Christianity. Yeah. We have to face, you know, the reality. Yeah, I think forgiveness and grace gives us the courage to face yeah. 
the pain that we cause. Do you think that sometimes we, we use grace as a shield to hide away from the realities in our sins? At times I think so, on both sides. Yes. The wife that just forgives yes. and say grace and doesn't want to go into the feelings of rejection and, and not good enough and dealing with it, yes. And just say, okay, I forgive you. And also the one causing the pain. Um, saying, I got grace. Not facing up to the music or the reasons why it happens. Because most affairs and infidelity happens from a place of identity crisis. Um, it's got nothing to do with this. Mm. And to face that. Yeah, and I think it's difficult because you're inflicting pain on the other person, which makes the other person feel like it's about them. Yes, it's always the question, what did I do? Mm. Wow. Talking about that, um, Take me through broken relationships and marriages being restored. I know there's a lot of people that feel like, I think in this modern day and age, there's always a, if this happens, you walk away. If this happens, you do this. You know, And you're in a position where you work with a lot of couples in different situations. And I believe you've seen marriages that in society would deem as completely done, be restored to something very beautiful. There is a place where broken marriages are restored. Um, it's the, so the heroes in my world are the couples who journey on that road. It's a hard road. How broken is broken? Broken. Broken is broken. Uh, give me a scenario. I'm just trying to get the people that are watching to understand. It's not just like, a, oh, we had a fight this morning, broken. I'm a sex addict. Sure. And I had seven partners in the last three weeks. Uh, outside the marriage? Outside the marriage, yes. I cheated on your best friend. Um, our fight led to the place where I held a knife to your throat. Um, yeah. Broken. Yeah. Broken. I tried to commit suicide because of what you've done. Wow. Broken. Hmm. Broken. And the couples who walk that path are the heroes in my world. Yeah. Because it's hard one step at a time. It's courageous. It's willing to work to a new relationship because most of the times the old relationship is over. True. Yeah. It's over. So it's are we willing to step into a new story? Are we willing to take accountability for what we've done? How I contributed and really work hard. Um, and for the first part of that relationship makes it hard is it's a couple in trauma and do the trauma work of recreating safety. It's immense hard work, but there is a place. And, and, and that's why I see that the love really exists, that people, despite of that pain, chooses that path mm -hmm. to say, five years was bad, but the 20 years before that, yeah. I have memories that, that gives me the belief that I should go through with this mm -hmm. and work extremely hard and then see this couple evolving through this pain, mm. coming into an immaculate relationship. So for most of these couples to get through the trauma, it was a stepping stone into it. They always have a greater marriage than the one they had. Yes. Because the old one didn't work, that's why it happened. So the new one is two people conscious, realizing where the unconscious will takes you. Um, and that's a beautiful thing to see. That's what I give my life for, to work with those couples to that place. Wow, that's, yeah, it's very interesting, very, very interesting. So what's the, what's the restoration process like? And I'd like to get in the, in the details of it, and I think for somebody that's watching. And also, I mean, you and I were chatting about something um, off air. Take me through the, 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 the trends, you know, like you were saying that years ago, it was more applauded to stay in a marriage. And now it's more shame to stay in a marriage if it's not working, you know, and you have to deal with that because I also think that these couples are coming, are coming to you with the issues of the marriage, but also with the shame of having to stay in this relationship that's not working. And the society they're living. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the one thing that, I don't know where it shifted, but it shifted. <laughs> that to get, to get divorced was a shame, yes. and now to stay married mm. if there's pain, mm. that's a shame. So the girlfriends have, have coffee or they have gin and tonic and then they <laughs> speak about the marriage and they say, no, you've got a voice, you're strong, you should walk away. Yes. 
leave. You don't deserve this. You deserve better. Yeah. You deserve happiness. Yeah. Yeah. You can take care of yourself. Self. Yeah. Of You've got your own career. That's why your daddy said you should go to Vitz or, mm. or Johannesburg University. Yeah. You've got your own life now. Sure. That's the one. The second trend I see is it's the first time we get married for happiness and intimacy in the world. So that brings a whole new dynamic, especially for the millennials. Um, we've got the story, if a marriage isn't happy, it's the wrong marriage. And, and happy becomes this new, Hannah Montana saw us happy. <laughs> yes. This dream. So when it becomes difficult, and two people start rubbing each other in, into those places that I've shared with you, they check out. Mm. It's not supposed to be difficult. Yeah. You're supposed to be happy. Yes. You should leave. Sure. You should leave. And then the other trend I see is the trend of um, the thing about men and women. Things like men, not, men always don't listen or men only want sex and women want... And that's a big stigma that, that hurts relationships because that's not the truth. Wow. It's not the truth. Wow. So... Um with dealing with a lot of young couples, you know, with that stigma, I, I just want to extend this conversation as an advice to somebody who is probably newly married or has been married for a while and has got a, a tough marriage. How do you handle that? At what point do you decide that, okay, do you then not tell people about the issues that you don't have to be ashamed when they tell you to leave? Or what do you do when you're in that situation, when you're going through a very difficult marriage and a difficult time? What's the step? Well, preferably, it's best if you don't talk to people outside your marriage, mm -hmm. if you haven't resolved it here. Mm -hmm. Because people don't have the full story. Yes. They're only hearing your side of the story. And they will not give you good advice. Mm -hmm. If I talk to my mom about Inesma when it hurts, I'm sure she will tell me. Yes. Um, when she talks to her mom or her yes. friends, it's not good advice. Yes. So who you seek advice to in pain is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other part of the question was, um, what do I do if it's difficult? Yes, if it's difficult yes, yes. I always tell young couples that you need to embrace that. That the first difficulty you engage in your marriage, mm. that's where growth happens. Mm. So if people stop pushing pain away and embrace it, mm. say, listen here, we're stuck, but I've heard this guy saying that stuckness is the place of awakening, mm. so are you willing to journey with me on this? Yes. So we're just at the next level of awakening. Yeah in our marriage. How does one then deal with um, a partner that doesn't want to be conscious or want to be part of um, bettering the marriage? Because the, the, the woman or the man could be completely aware that we need help and this and this and the other partner just thinks, no, we don't. You just need to change your ways and we'll be good. Yeah, that's a hard one. I always say the greatest gift to marriage is a self-reflective partner that's open to growth. That's a big gift. I don't think a lot of people have that. But it's usually a process. I guide people in that. They will say, try this. And I usually say to them, use the language of positive regard. That means, if, if I talk to you, Lisma, I say to her, we need to go, go to, uh, need to go to counseling because you need to start listening to me. You're not listening to me. Oh, okay, I hear what you're saying. Blame and shame. There's no way she's gonna go with you. But if I give the invitation to growth and I say to her, my dream for us is to be the best husband possible for you because how I want you to feel with me is loved and understood. That's why I got married to you. But I don't know how to do that. Would you be on, go on a journey with me to teach me how to do that? Because a big part of marriage is learning how to love. That's the other thing people struggle with. Is we don't know how to love. We need to learn that. Love isn't natural as breathing. It's art. It's an art. So are you willing to learn with me, to, to keep on giving that invitation? Or to even ask a question like, how do you feel in our marriage? And would you like to feel loved and close and understood? Would you go on a journey with me to learn that? So the approach is not something is broken, we need to fix it, but more something like we're on the road to greatness. Would you go on that journey with me? That, that usually works. Yeah, so sometimes it does take one person being away and one person studying the counseling all by themselves to get help to lure in the other partner yeah. into it. Most processes start there. And then also to work with fear, hey, that's important because some, someone says no to counseling because there's fear. To have a conversation about it, say, Elizabeth, you don't want to go to counseling with me. What is your fear around this? 
No, she would say it's a man or it's a woman or... And just to listen to that. So I get your fear and to talk about the reason that you don't want to go and, and to get understanding of that. I had a previous um, experience when I was 13 years old with a psychologist who just draw pictures and I felt very alone. And I'm afraid this session is going to be like this. And just to get start talking about that. So what do you need from a counselling session to say yes to that? And to get that conversation going. That is so interesting and I think there's so much to unpack but for the sake of time, this is the end of it. But I think we will be seeing you again on the show in terms of, the, I think there's a lot to really unpack as far as counselling is concerned and going through different challenges and issues that couples face. So thank you very much, thank you for and Elisma, for joining us. Thank you very much. So thank you so much for watching. You can find Louie on the details below on the screen at Couples Help. If you need any counseling, you need any advice, you need any help with your marriage or your relationship, he's your go-to guy. Thank you so much. And don't forget again to engage with us on all of our social media platforms. And I'll see you next time.